Um, well, we all know there's lots of hype and there's lots of discussion and there's lots of discussion about is something actually blockchain or blockchain inspired. And if you if you kind of go back to kind of what you know the core of blockchain is, you have you know a distributed ledger and you have the ability to have a consensus network. You know, people agreeing on the history and the ledger, and then you have the ability to uh, not go back and change the history because you'd have to change it in in lots of places. So there 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 are there, there's lots of buzz and there's lots of use cases that are being discussed. You know the ones that are maybe most likely to to um, come to fruition earlier are addressing you know, the big data issues within financial services companies. And that all largely has to do with standardization. So one of the keys to blockchain is you have standardized you know, scripting between transactions, between the whole network, and the data is exchanged, and it all matches as on the same protocol. And one of the big issues within you know, banks and insurance companies and other financial player ecosystems is they're all on different standard protocols. So you take certain asset classes, and these are, and again, I don't think any of these use cases have sort of gotten, come to fruition um, you know, to any extent yet, but the, but the areas that people think there might be the, the, the earliest wins is you take syndicated loans or you take um, a complex asset class that today takes two weeks to match protocols, to make sure the information's all correct, you know, time and money to settle. And if there was a standardized way within either you know, a private blockchain or distributed uh, ledger network to communicate, that could happen more quickly. Um, uh, public networks, you know, a private network being be a group, but a public network, again, the whole benefit is, okay, the communication can happen quickly, the protocol and the way you're identifying people and the way you are communicating is standardized. And, you know, the use case of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies where it's kind of a low dollar value, you know, that could potentially happen. And we all know that there's been lots of ups and downs to that. So those are the, you know, the cases are where you're standardizing data and you're having a standard protocol of information between a network and where there's a consensus and agreement on you know, the history and what's occurred. And in complex transactions, there are use cases that many think will kind of gain traction faster than others. Um, uh, use cases such as equity trading, most people think will never happen because the issue is the time this all takes for the consensus and for the agreement. You know, equity t trading today is, is whatever it is, three milliseconds, you know, and, and blockchain today is something, you know, you hear between seven to 10 minutes. So those kind of use cases most likely will not come to fruition, mm -hmm. but where you have complex transactions, where you don't have standardized protocol, where you need, you know, identity verification, where you need standardized, um, uh, you know, transaction flow and standardized communication. Uh, many people, there are use cases there that, you know, uh, enhance liquidity, they're settled more quickly, and lower costs. So those are frequently the use cases where you say, okay, there's something where they're helping out the bank or they're helping out the, the financial ecosystem player, um, and, you know, this will gain traction.